Hey everyone, how's it going? Shuffles back here with another video, and this is going to be a quick one. So, if we take a look at our calendar here today, we look over on Friday, we scroll down a little bit, you can see there is a Quarter of Glory and Brave, Con uh, Brave Conquest event. And if we click on it, you can see the grand prize is not only a legendary skill crystal, but Lunaria. And if you look beside her picture here, there's a little puzzle piece, which means that we are getting a brand new Hero Collector event uh, where we have to go through kind of like the Azolde event, uh, where we'll have to go through, collect fragments, and you can get a, a copy of Lunaria. So I don't. I would assume this one would be harder, but that being said, a lot of the people that are going to be doing this event, or would be doing this event, have already gotten Lunaria. So... Uh, maybe you'll have an easier time winning your tournaments than you would have previously, because you'll be uh, they will, might not be pushing for this. Although that being said, they might be pushing to get extra copies of her um, in order to be able to awaken her. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's go take a look at her kit really quick and where she's good, just so you know whether or not it's worth it. Spoiler alert: it's very worth it. <clears throat> she's one of the best epics in the game. Lunaria is a piercer lord. Basically, long story short, what that means is that all your piercers that are on the same team as her will get a range extension. So, faction allies' attack ranges are also increased. So, let's before we even look at her, let's look at the other people in her faction. Uh, if you have Araka, this is probably not news to you, but other people in the faction include Nyx, Calypso, Absent, Silas, uh, if you were really lucky and pulled Sargak this weekend, Razik is another one, uh, even Brienne and Theowin, uh, and to a lesser extent Turiel, although it does work with her, uh, they will all get range extension. The nice thing with this is if you look at someone like Silas, you can see he's got, this is his range, he's got a little point at the end, and then the two sides are empty, but once he's awakened, he gets the full range here. If you have a unit like this with their extension, all it does is fill in the corners for them. But if you have this, it'll give you a whole nother row across the top. So they get a full extra three tiles across the top that they can reach. Which, if you've never used a Piercer Lord before, is totally broken. Uh, for someone like Silas, he can literally kill things before they would ever even normally be in range. Things that he maybe wouldn't be able to kill because he didn't have time to kill them, he'll now kill easily. It makes a massive difference. Uh, and that's that's all because she's in the team. You don't even need to build her. She just has to be there and be the leader skill for, those, for the people in your faction. Uh, also increases their attributes by 10%, which is kind of nice. Uh, she also has a pretty good kit, actually. She's underrated. Um, with each Dark Moon arrow, if you're looking at a talent, with each Dark Moon arrow triggered gains 30 rage, so she can fill her rage meter pretty quickly, and that's going to be important. But we'll get to that in a minute. So it deals 100% damage to one enemy. Airborne units prioritized and take extra damage. 25% chance of triggering this Dark Moon arrow, uh, with the chance scaling based on distance from the target. So pretty good chance at increasing her rage meter just with her basic attack. Of course, the Rage Meter affects the ultimate, which in this case can means the power of Dark Moon shooting three Dark Moon arrows. Again, the chance, three chances to boost her Rage Meter to a single target rac uh, rapidly restores an extra 60 Rage if the target is killed. So you can see very quickly how much she's going to stack up this Rage Meter, and this hits very hard. Also, skill up's very good. Uh, skill cost down, initial Rage up, more Restoration on a kill... Uh, more arrows, like, gets really, really good. And then Dark Arrow also marks the enemy for 7 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. Each stack of mark increases damage by 5%. And that also upgrades as well. Um, and then on top of it, if we take a look at hers, you can see her range is also very good. Her cost is very good at only 11 cost. And her attack interval is very good at 2.0. So she attacks often, and she's low cost, and she hits hard, and she has one of the best Lord skills in the game. So pretty crazy. 
Uh, I can't believe they're actually giving her away now, but uh, I got nothing from my Ancient Summons, and I don't have a Piercer Lord, as you can see here. So I'm super excited to get her, because I happen to have Calypso, Nyx, and Silas, and my Brienne's built as well. Uh, and I have Turiel, but I haven't built her. But side note also, actually, if you use Nisande, because uh, I happen to have Lunaria on my baby account, but if you use her, it also extends her heal range. So you get an extra three tiles across her heal range, which means she may, she turns into one of the better ranges on a heal in the entire game, uh, if you have a Piercer Lord. So keep that in mind as well. Um, but yeah, that's really all I wanted to cover for today. That is starting on Friday, so keep an eye out for that. Um, if you don't have her, she's definitely a must get. In terms of locations, you're, the main thing you want her for is for Gear Raid 3. This is her best location by far. If we take a look at the Stage 19, 20, 21 teams, it's borderline required to have a Piercer Lord. So this first team doesn't happen to have one, but they have Cetrum. Funny enough, this one doesn't either. Uh, but Piercer Lord, Piercer Lord, Cetrum and Piercer Lord, Piercer Lord, Piercer Lord, uh, this one doesn't have either. Also, that's surprising. Uh, Piercer Lord and Piercer Lord. And if we jump to 21, Piercer, 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 and Piercer. Every single team that's cleared 21 has a Piercer Lord. So... You're going to need one if you don't have Araka and you don't have Lunaria. This, like I said, this is a must get. You will not be able to clear 21 without it. So I'm surprised anyone even cleared 19 without either that or Cetrum. Uh, I assume most of those teams were without, were with Power of Dominance after the fact. Because um, I don't, I don't see a way you could possibly clear it <clears throat> without one of the two. Uh, but yeah, keep that in mind. It is coming up this Friday. And it'll probably be about the same time, so probably last about two weeks. So make sure you have enough resources to be able to do that Fragment Collector event. And enjoy your brand new Lunaria. So hopefully everybody enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.